Cross-cultural medicine really is the study of different medical practices or medical systems as they exist in different societies. You know, in, in, in every culture, well in general I would say, in, in every culture, you have three different types of medical systems that are, um, that are in play simultaneously. You have uh, what Arthur Kleinman, this is Arthur Kleinman's typology. You have what we call the folk a system of basically a system of popular medicine, um, popular health care. And uh, that's basically your social network and the health care practices that you or health care beliefs that you as an individual and your network has. You then have a sort of a more professional system. This is a highly regulated system with legally recognized health care providers. Um, in the U.S., for example, we have uh, biomedical providers and some CAM providers, like, say, traditional Chinese medicine is one example. In countries such as India, you have both uh, biomedical physicians, you have Ayurvedic physicians, you have Sita physicians, um, and you have Unani physicians, um, all licensed to practice and also with various healthcare institutions, various types of hospitals. One thing that I do with cross-cultural medicine is to look at those different systems, the beliefs behind them, and their usage. And as we live in an increasingly globalized world, I am fascinated to try to understand how those systems travel from one country to the other. We are now finding, really in the last 10 or 15 years, um, in various countries that um, governments and NGOs are beginning to look at traditional medicine, not only to see what benefits it might have for meeting needs when there are no other options, but also they're looking at ways of training traditional medical providers or traditional healers in the basics of primary care and primary prevention. And that can range from teaching them about nutritional counseling to teaching them about hand washing, HIV and AIDS education, a whole variety of factors. Um, and at the same time that, that traditional healers are being trained that way, they're also being taught which of their practices might be beneficial and which practices need to be modified, for example. It's very exciting to see this going on. There is actually quite a lot of animosity in many places among biomedical providers and, um, well, between biomedical providers and between traditional healers. Um, sometimes there are reasons for this that are justified, sometimes there are reasons that I think are not justified. And one interesting endeavor in the next 10 or 15 years will be to really look at that relationship and ask the following question in countries where there are not enough biomedical providers or enough biomedical resources and that question is what can the bio the biomedical sector that exists now what can it learn from traditional healers and what can traditional healers need to ask what can they learn from the biomedical sector